Okay, I started uh, teaching third period and forgot to record. So the first thing we want to talk about is these are a bunch of different ways to look at relationships points. So the first one is a table, and then we've got some graphs here. Um, we've got to kind of think of back to what a function is. So it's called a relation. This is section 6-2, day one. And so a relation is when we have a set of ordered pairs. So we have a set of ordered pairs in the green box here, or the green table. I gave it a name of f of x, and then we've already determined in um, period three if it's a function. In order to tell if it's a function, we look at all the x's. If all the x's are different numbers, all unique, then yes, it's a function. So that's what we got up to before I forgot to hit record. <laughs> okay, now that we're recording and we're live in Shaft and Zoom, we're going to talk about the new word, which is called inverses. So to find an inverse, you're going to take all the y's and change them to the x answers. So I was starting to copy that when I had in a, uh, whoa, I got to stop. So I'm taking all of the y's, making them the x's, and then what am I doing with all the x's, guys? Guys, what am I doing? Making all the X's the Y's. So it's just flipping the table around. When you flip the table around, that is called your inverse, and this is the notation that you need to learn. The notation is you take the original function and you just say it's the F function to the negative one of X. This is the notation that means inverse. It's really important as you go into any kind of testing that you learn that this means inverse because they could ask you find the inverse. They could say find the f of negative one of x and they won't use the word inverse. So in the math, whoa, what was that? So in the math world, this and this are interchanged that math students are supposed to know that notation means inverse. So they'll ask to find the inverse without actually using the words. So that little negative one means go ahead and take that table and flip it. Now that it's flipped, does anybody have any questions about that? And now that it's flipped, is the red one a function? What do you think, Matt? Is the red one a function? You guys think, yeah? No, if Johanna's saying no, it's about half and half. What do you guys think? <coughs> oh my goodness, no or yes. No, it's not. The no's win. Very good. So this is not a function. So anyone that thought yes, look up for a second. What tells me it's not a function, guys? The x values that are repeating. Very good. So if you go ahead and look, these are my repeating x values. Hi, Shadows. How are you? I'm recording right now. So anything I say is being recorded um, verbally, okay? I just want to make sure he locked my door. I got to keep my kids safe. So I'm Ms. Shackton. This is Algebra 2 Honors. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of say hi to you in a little bit. You're um, walking through some of the iSTEM program. Welcome to Countryside. I'm losing my voice, though. I sound like I've smoked a pack of cigarettes or something today. I hate smoking, too. I don't smoke anything. It's disgusting. Um, but anyways, um, so I, I feel a little raspy today. You might see some things that you've seen in Algebra 1. So if you want to listen up, these are really good. So welcome, uh, Thomas. I know you'll get caught up. So this is not a function. Okay, we'll go into the second problem of today. The second problem of today will be uh, what you see right here. Who knows what we call these? Um, Brady, do you remember what these are called, these U-shaped graphs? Sasha, do you remember what those U-shaped graphs are called? Yes, you do, it's there. <coughs> oh man, stop it, it's my recording. Um, Audrey, you remember what those U-shaped graphs are called? Quadratics, very good. So we're gonna go into some quadratics. So these are your quadratics, they look like U's. Who do you call them something else? Amanda, you know what else they're called? Starts with a P. Parabolas, yeah. So these are our parabolas or our quadratics. My guys in the back, you've probably heard of those before in Algebra 1. So they look like U-shaped graphs. Now I can't quite see that table. So what I do is we'll call this G of X, okay? I'm gonna call him G of X. This is my little baby quadratic. I'm just going to give him a name. So we'll say g of x. Well, since I can't see the table, I'm going to pull out the x, y points. So we're going to go to those really bolded points there, and we're just going to label them like we would from the origin. So, Jack, holy moly, what is going on with my recording? 
It's just so annoying. I'm sorry, people online about people that are listening to us later. Absent kids. Sorry, it's bad today. It's like when I touch you right here. Nope, maybe not. Okay, Jack, what is this point from the origin? What would you label that? Negative two, six. Good. Yeah, it's kind of a test of your eyesight today. Good. And then, Elliot, how about if we go to this point next because it's nice and bolded? What would you label that point? From the origin, that second little arrow. Negative one, three, good. You could label them on here, but what I do is I label them in a table, and do you also see how I'm moving left to right so that they're in order? <coughs> Michelle, what is our next um, point that we have right here? Zero, two, good. And then Addy will get you for the fourth one. We're almost done with that. One, three, and then Sasha, how about the last one that's way up here? Two, six. Now we've got all of our X, Y points. And so what we did, Thomas, on the first one is we determined if it was a function. Um, what do you think, Josh? Is this one a, a function, this G of X? Yes, you had a 50-50 chance. Can you tell me why? Why is it a function? Good. I don't know if you guys heard that in video land, but none of the X values are the same in the X column. Very good. So yes, it's a function. And now that I know it's a function, I can go ahead and I can inverse it. Now the inverse symbol, Thomas, looks like this. If I label it G of X, this is your inverse symbol. It looks like G raised to the negative one. It's really weird, but it's their notation for inverse. And before you came in, I was telling them when you go to SAT and ACT, they're not going to tell you to inverse. They're going to say, find the, find the G of, we're possessed today, guys, you're back in full swag. Find the G of negative one of X. I just hope it doesn't stop. I don't care if it makes a little noise. So if, yeah, this is the notation for inverse. So a lot of times they don't use the word inverse, and we need to know that notation means find the inverse because you're going to leave SAT and you're going to be mad at yourself. You're going to say, I remember that G of negative 1X. I didn't remember what it was. You're going to get home. You're going to be like, oh, crap, that was just changing the X's and Y's. I could have done that. That's another one I could have gotten right on SAT. Huh? I was thinking it's the speaker, the other one. If I drop, drop it on the floor, will it be better? Probably not, huh, Jess? Okay, we'll see. Okay, anyway, let's go ahead and reverse this. We're going to take all the Y's and now make them our X's. And what do you notice is, is um, happening here? Caesar, what happens when I change all those Y's to X's? Is it a function anymore? No, why is it not? What happened? The threes, yeah. So see how the threes repeated? This is in your Algebra 1 class, too. I don't know if you guys in the back are geometry or Algebra 1. But in order for it to be a function, you can't have any repeating x's. It won't pass what's called the vertical line test. Well, I'm going to go ahead and help you here. You want to know a little hint? Every single quadratic, every single one, every one that looks like a u from the start or even upside down u is always, yes, a function. And every single time you inverse it, it becomes a sideways U. We're about to see that in just a minute, and it's not going to be a function. So that's a little hint there. Whenever you see a U-shaped graph, you're going to go, yep, function, not function. The reason I tell you that is when we graph this, you're going to feel like you're doing it wrong, possibly. You're going to go 6. What do you think it is? You think it's a stupid field thing over there? What is it? Look, it's down here. Do you think it's the speaker? Do I really need the speaker on to record though? No. Can I turn it off? Now it's going to be like they don't hear me or something, right? Is that, is that my voice going through the computer right now? That's what I think it is. Because if I bring the computer away, like when I walk back there, they can't hear me anymore. So I noticed that when I recorded my welcome video. Okay, technology's not my, my jammy jam here. So if you're going into ISAM and any of the tech things, you can help me later on in life. So anyways, we'll go ahead and graph this. But when you graph this, it looks like six, negative two. Doesn't it look like I'm doing it wrong? And then I go three and negative one and two, zero. And I start to think my answer's wrong. So if you know the U is always going to turn sideways, it's going to give you a little more confidence when you graph it because you are doing it right. 
it looks like this, a sideways U. Now you gotta label it in some way. You can label it with the notation or you can color code. So if you wanna color code like I am, then I'll know which graph is which, or you can just put a little label on it. Sorry about all the static. Okay, we got one more to do on this page. Um, what do we call this one? Um, Uh, Maddie, what is this type of graph? It's not a quadratic. We call it a, and it looks like this. Natalie, what is this graph called when it looks like that? A line, good. Josh? Linear, good, yeah. So um, the third one we're doing here, letter C, is a line. So a line will inverse to another line. Linears, whenever we change them, it's a line and a line. That means the domain for all of these, what are the x values? Domain is all real numbers, yeah. How about the range? All real numbers. So lines are the easy ones. I always think algebra one was easier than algebra two. It's your beginning, right? And in algebra one, you always learn about how to graph a line. If I have anybody walk in my classroom in algebra two, they usually can throw out at me y equals mx plus b. Um, but they don't always remember the parabolas from Algebra 1. So these are your lines, so they're your basis. So a line inverses to a line. Let's see what it does for the point. I'm calling this H of X. I just gave him a name. I just had a little baby line. Here he is. Okay, let's pull off some points again. Um, can I go ahead and have Maddie help me with that then? What would this point be, Maddie? Good. Can I stick it with you for one more of those points? Negative 2, negative 1. What's the next one? Negative 1, 0 is perfect. Addie, can you get me the third point, please? Good, yeah. And then the very, um, we'll do four points. What's the next point? Yeah, 1, 2. And now we can see, is this a function? What do you think, Brady? Function, yes or no? Yes, it is. See how all the x's are different? So it's yes, a function. It also passes what's called the vertical line test. Now, to Diego, I have to inverse this. So if I'm going to inverse this, what do I actually do to inverse it? Yeah, I just switch those x's and y's. I always feel like I'm cheating a little, like I'm copying my neighbor or something. But I'm just going to take the y's and I'm going to just copy them. And I'm going to take the x's. I make sure they still pair together correctly. And then I need a certain notation. The notation to call this an inverse is x of negative 1 of x. And that is what the inverse looks like. I'm going to graph it. So what we're seeing now, and I'll generalize, every single line is yes, a function, with one exception, except what kind of line? What kind of line would repeat the x's? Vertical, you're so smart, good, yeah. So with the exception of a vertical. So anytime you see y equals mx plus b, anything that looks like a line, it's always yes, 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 a function, unless it's a vertical line. Those vertical lines are not functions. And so if a line inverses to a function, what do you think the inverse always is? It's always yes, a function also. So it always goes yes function, yes function, yes function, unless it's vertical. Okay, let's get that on the graph. Everybody can finish this up on their own. Negative one, negative two, zero, negative one, one, zero, and two, one. And we are good to go. Now I made a little change to the notes. So if you copied the notes, you won't have tomorrow. You might wanna print out the last two pages that are uploaded on, on Focus. Um, otherwise, you'll just have to get a piece of paper when you come in and you'll just hand copy. I was going to add cubics. These will hold off until we get into the next section or a different section. Cubics are x's raised to the third, and they look like squiggle graphs. They look like little squiggly graphs. Uh, kind of like that. And they always inverse to a sideways squiggle. And we probably should be covering them, but we're not going to cover them in Module 6. We'll cover them later on. We're going to graph those cubics as we go further. I made a note at the end. I have no idea, but I made it at the end of what our inverse symbol looks like. I made my notes, and I was like, why didn't I put that at the top? 
but that's the symbol that you'll always see. That's a big idea moving forward. And we've got two graphs to do and we're good. We are gonna go on to the next page of notes if you printed them. Any questions at all? Grab the calculator off the wall, okay? Go ahead and grab that. And I'm gonna share my calculators with the iSend kids and just say hi to them as you guys are getting this page either copied or you're gonna go ahead and just get it out if you copied it already. You don't need the title really because we already know what section we're in. And what I did is I moved this lesson up a day. So you can just get, this is still day one. You haven't been here for two days, even though it seems like that. The other thing is if you're copying, please don't copy this, you don't need that. And then this is our first year with a new book, um, um, ISEM kids, so like a couple changes. I don't usually have this many changes. And then we're gonna graph two things in here. So I'm gonna let them play along too. We'll get to the calculator. It's such a boring day to just listen to me talk. Um, let's see. So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna graph. I think you guys need to play with me here. You guys have been helpful. I think you should play with them. Does anyone want to play with them? Anybody else have a calculator? If you play around with them, they're like really good. You can't use them for geometry. So if you're gonna take geometry next year, you would go ahead and buy that calculator. It's about 20 bucks. But um, it's way, way worth it. And they take everything so it's about ready to get started. Okay, good. So we're going over to example two. And you can see in my class, some of the kids have notes that look just like mine, like see how hers looks just like mine. So I upload these and then they can just print them out and fill them in. So some people do that, our kids help people with that too. If you guys are in pre-calc, make sure you'll be able to print out the notes. College algebra, she doesn't do it, but that's okay. She's a fabulous teacher too. She just doesn't do me blank notes. Okay, so when we go into this, um, who recognizes what this is? Michelle, if I say y equals 3x plus 2, do you know what kind of um, function that is? What does it look like or what, what does it make? Any idea? It is, yeah, good. You're kind of thinking it. I can, I can totally see that. So f of x is just a fancy way to write a y. So Michelle was like, wait, that kind of sounds like y equals mx plus b, and that's totally right. So if it's y equals mx plus b, uh, Jayma, what is it going to graph to look like? y equals mx plus b. What is it going to look like when I graph it? Yeah, good, Josh. Josh is giving me symbols back there. What do you think, Daphne? What will graph to look like? You guys know? Leah? Sometimes I feel like I'm a Daphne guy. If it's y equals mx plus b, what is it going to graph to look like? Anybody remember? It's just a normal line. Yeah, it's just a line. Does anybody remember how to graph it? What's the first thing we're going to put on the graph? Go ahead, Jayma. Uh, Johanna. That's fine. So the B, so you're going to start with the B, which is the y-intercept. So you're going to start at the positive 2. Um, very good. And then do you know where to go from there? Up 3 over 1. So she's using the slope. Is that coming back to people now? So we go ahead and we have a y-intercept, and we go up 3 and over 1. I do like how repetitive our book is. So um, for my guys in the back that are new for the ISEM2, you always graph the y-intercept, and then you go up three and over one. That's a, uh, my, kid's a, my kid's an eighth grader, so I know what you guys are learning in Algebra 1. This is on her test today. Are you guys in Algebra 1? Yeah. yeah. So you're probably doing systems right now where you graph a line and graph a line and they intersect. That's what her test is today, yeah. So this is graphing a line, right? So they're doing the same thing. We just go harder in here. So this is the continuation. So it goes up three and over one, and down three and over one, and down three and over one. She was doing substitution and elimination too. Those were other methods that she was doing last night when she was studying. Okay, so that's our line. We wanna label that. That's the f of x. And what I wanted to show um, our friends that are visiting today is once you get to algebra two, you, you, we really don't have to pull all those points off. Do you guys remember how we use the calculator? What do I hit on the calculator? Table, and I can type this in. This is really cool, so if you guys wanna try this, you hit table, three X plus two. You just type it in, and Charlotte can help you too if you want, if you're interested. You're gonna to wanna to buy this calculator later on, right? You can't use it in Algebra One for the FSA, but later on you'll be able to in Geometry. And you press enter, 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 and why do we love this? It gives us all the values. 
So it's a way that I can get the table without have to pull every point off. You know, I can just put it into the calculator. So that's really nice as you move up with your math. We're assuming everybody in the room knows how to graph y equals mx plus b, and not everybody does. So they have this to fall back on. Well, there is a part of the SAT that is non-calculator, so you can't always use your calculator. So doing like, um, I think at the back, in the back. Oh, Johanna did, and using the, um, you know, bless you, the y uh, intercept and the slope is a great idea. So now we have a great table. Since we have the table of f of x, um, what am I going to do now? Um, Jayma, how can I get the inverse? Just switch them, yeah. We'll go ahead and switch them. So we're going to take the y's, make them the x's. Take the x's, make them the y's. We'll be doing a similar concept tomorrow when we algebraically solve these, not graphically. And now we're going to graph that. Oh, wait, is the purple one a function? Um, Aiden, what do you think? Is the purple one a function? Uh, yeah. yeah, it is. All of those x's were different. Also, that'll help our Algebra 1 kids. Functions is on your FSA. I taught Algebra 1 last year. And then we'll go ahead and do negative 4, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0. Ooh, sorry. 2, 0. <laughs> Five, one, that looks good. We've got another line. What about this inverse, Elliot? Is this inverse gonna also be a function? The green one? Yeah, yeah. We know that a line will always inverse to another line, and that's because all of the x's are different. All of those input values are different, is what they call them. Okay, we've got one more, and that's the end of today's lesson, and then we'll move on to our yellow worksheet. So here's our yellow worksheet dropping from the front. You guys want to grab a worksheet? Because we're going to do it. Or are you just going to try to get it? Sure, as long as you grab one for your friends, that's all right. I'm not sure, actually. Go back and show your algebra one page what we're doing with that guy's hand. Because they're checking out your kids' work in that area. Yep, you're exactly up to the one that I'm about to do. Yeah, no, I like when you guys consolidate your moves. I'm the same way. I'll go to a faculty meeting and I'll be making an answer key at the same time or I'll be watching TV and making an answer key or grading. Okay, we're going to move up then. It looks like everybody's just waiting on me. I don't want to make it any longer than it has to be with all of our static interruptions. It is still going though. Yay, I hate when I have to re-record. Okay, so this one is not going to make a line. Who knows what this is going to look like? It's going to look like a parabola. It's going to look like a U-shaped graph. So this one's going to look a little bit different. It's called a quadratic. So if you don't remember that, that's a good thing to know. There'll probably be one linear and one quadratic on Tuesday's quizzes. And so when we go on over, we're going to now graph that. I know how to graph that without a calculator. I could make an XY chart, pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. I could plug it in. I also see the H and K. It's not shifting left or right, but it is shifting up three. So I have a lot of different ways to graph this, but probably what you're going to do is either make an XY chart or plug it into your calculator. So this one's called G of X. And when I pick values, I'm going to pick these values right here. I'm just going to do that in my head. You guys are very good at the calculator in this class. But for my friends that are new in the back, I want to show you another cool thing. If you take this and you hit table, so next year or in Algebra 2, you can type in x to the second plus 3 and press enter, 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 and you can go ahead and get a table of values. Now, my Algebra 1 kids in the back would not be able to do this. They can't use this calculator. So they would have to take negative 2 and plug it in. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. So for my students that maybe take SAT and are on a non-calculator section, you could plug these in. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, plus 3 is 4. 0 squared is 0, plus 3 is 3. 1 squared is 1, 1 plus 3 is 4. And 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. So you are able to do it without the calculator for people without calculators. You're going to get the exact same table we got. The way we find where the vertex is, 
is remember the vertex is always in between the repeated y's. So this is stuff we've learned earlier in the year. So it's always in between the repeated y's. And now we're going to graph that. What do you think, Audrey? Is the purple one um, a function? Yeah. It is a function. She is right. All of these um, x values are different. So we go ahead and graph them. I had somebody in the other class that left it like that. La, la, la. Connect the dots, please. Make sure you connect the dots. And now we have to find the inverse because I have all the points there. It is rather easy to just switch the x's and y's. All of my y's are now my x's and all of my x's are now my y's. If I look at those, what do you think? Um, Aaliyah, is that going to be a function, the green one? No, it's not. So it's not a function, and it's not a function because of the repeated um, values that you see here. Got a lot of repeating there, so not a function. And then we'll go ahead and graph it. Now, because Ms. Shackton told me a quadratic will always inverse to a sideways one, when I start to graph, I don't feel like it's wrong anymore, which is normally how I feel. I go 7 negative 2, and I go 4, negative 1, and 3, 3, 0, and I usually feel like I'm doing something wrong. But because I know what it's supposed to look like, I know that I'm, I'm confident to move on that this is what the inverse will look like. We've got one more thing to hit home. If you're kind of moving on to the yellow, will you just come with me for domain? Or you're going to have not 100% on Tuesday, possibly. And I, I saw a couple people's ears open up because they want their 100%. So if we go to the purple one, domain means what can x be? What are the x values of the purple one? What is it? All real numbers. Here's a hint. Every single parabola always starts with all real, no, real numbers as its domain. Isn't it just an x to the second? There's no fractions. There's no radicals. It's all real numbers. But when it inverses, the domain changes. And this is the tricky part. You ready? What is the domain of the green one? Who can get that? We've covered this in the parabola section. What's the um, domain of the green one? Where are the x's starting at? Three. Nice job, Jack. They're starting at three, and where are they going to? To the right. How do we say the right? Positive infinity. Very good. So they're starting at 3. Do you guys see that? And going on to positive infinity, what do I put around the 3? A bracket. What do I put around the infinity? I can't say you didn't learn anything this year. You guys are so smart. That was really, did you feel like you took that from like the back of your brain and like totally moved it forward? Okay, so that was really good. So you're going to get some weird domains when the parabolas go sideways. But other than that, that's about as hard as it gets. Questions for me? Okay, it's homework time. Yay! Let's